if you're watching this video, that means that my internet died out and I'm really sorry. If I get to go back on, then I'll continue where this video has left off. If I don't, then I will jump into the YouTube channel and then I'll continue to chat that way. I really apologize. Let me welcome you to my classroom. This is the part of my classroom where it was before February 2nd, before our school closure. Now, the bottom here, this is what it looks like to teach writing after February 2nd when we were forced off of campus because we wanted to make everyone sure everyone's safe. But just to give you my context, what you're seeing are fifth graders. I'm a fifth grade ELA teacher and I work at a private international school. This is best for teachers who are working with language learners who have internet at home or who have and who have technology because that would make sense there the most. My students are in phases three to five in WIDA, so they're not beginners, but I do share ideas for beginners. The three things that I'm going to be addressing today is genre writing, listening, reading, and writing together, integrated, and working with beginners. I share you, with you my context because I want to make sure that the audience that I work with uh, is different than yours, I'm pretty sure. And But yet the principles are the same. Our goal is to help kids learn in, in this really challenging environment. The principles are the same, the audiences are different, just like a Starbucks and a McCafe. The audiences are different, but the principles are very the same. When I give you a McCafe, your job is to turn this into a Starbucks. The principle for this writing instruction webinar are, is the exact same ones as last week with the reading one. We focus on asynchronous writing instruction and balancing it with synchronous writing instruction. There are times when the kids really need us and we provide synchronous reading instruction. And there are times when kids need us less. If that is the case, then we provide them with asynchronous learning opportunities because we need to work with the kids that need it the most or to give them the attention the most through, through video conferencing. So let's go with uh, virtual genre writing. The genre that I that we focused on in Unit 3, which, which was when we started uh, going off of physical school and going on to virtual school, was narrative writing. We first started off with a rubric. Then we broke the rubric into mini lessons. We created the videos for the mini lessons. Then we went to conferences with kids. And finally, we gave them an ability to publish their work. So I'm going to run through each of these to show you what it looks like. We first created a rubric based upon Lucy Calkins' rubric. And these became the mini lessons. These guided our focus, guided our instructions for the weeks to come. And what we did was every time we wanted to teach something from the rubric, we created a mini lesson for it. For example, this is the lead lesson, and here's the lead video. And I volunteered to do that. When I co-planned with my teacher, I said, hey, let's sequence this out together. You and I will sequence it out together. And then I will take on creating of the video so that it takes that off of her plate. And this is what collaboration means. We don't ask to be involved. But we offer our services. And when they take it, then yes. But I never force. I say, I'm going to do this. I'll say, hey, would you like me to make this, these videos? I don't mind doing that. So these are the lessons. And notice we they're, they're the exact same ones up here. For example, lead and then ending. We also have then, we also matched. There was a lead mini lesson and then an ending lesson. We took these links and then we placed them on something called a week at a glance. A week at a glance is a focus of breaking down the assignment and saying, this is what you have to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then embedding links to support kids to do that. For example, here is a daddy lesson. And here's another daddy lesson. Daddy stands for elaboration. How to, when we say kids, right, with more detail, they're like, what do you mean? And I say, oh, we say, oh, we want you to add dialogue, action, description, and our thoughts of the characters. And when we add those things, our writing becomes really vivid. And so you notice that we took these lessons and that we embed them here when they're appropriate, the sequencing of it. This document is so helpful to kids and parents because they have a they have a week at a glance and they say, okay, by Friday I have to do this. I can plan my day accordingly 
and I don't have to wait for thousands of emails and shift, shift through and filter through thousands of emails. I don't know where they are, the kids will say. Now it's all here for them. Then we have a mini lesson, and this is what a mini lesson looks like. Again, I would teach something, and then I would have my face, just like what I'm doing now, to show them. Let's watch for a few seconds. Uh, so your objective today is I can add details to elaborate on the story by using dialogue, action, description, and your thoughts. And I'll be sharing you that with you that later. It's called Daddy. D-A-D-I. Daddy. Daddy. So, but first, let's go back and look at some of your two students' leads. And I want to go, I'm going to walk you through them, and I want to say what I really liked about them and why they're really great, strong leads. And if they have uh, been able to use the lead, use the rubric to follow the lead. Okay, let's pause the video now. So let's look at two students writing this kind. Ooh, this comes from Olivia. Let me read it aloud to you, just the lead. Ski phobia. Phobia? Oh, ski phobia. I get it. Blankets cover tall pine trees. Okay. So that's an example. When I teach a mini lesson, like I say on Monday, I have kids practice it. On Tuesday, I share the work that it is, is an exemplar. I say, look what this person did. Ah, how insightful or they're using, when they did this technique, it made their writing be like this. We also then had mini conferences, and this was the synchronous part where we pulled kids together and we said, okay, let's conference with our writing. You've had multiple practices with this, let's conference together. And so kids would sign up one of the three days and the teachers created their availability and, they, and then they signed themselves to a teacher. And this was really great. They had one, they had a link for session one, person two, and person one and person two was here. So I just, all we had to do is click, and there was no need to create multiple calendar dates. It was just taking one Google Hangout and another Google Hangout, those two rooms, and using them repeatedly over and over again. This is what a reading conference, a writing conference might sound like. Please watch. <laughs> Okay, so let's see how it sounds now. However, every government banded the poachers of penguins, but they still continue to poach. The most that they ever poached was at 2006 to 2012, and it has 20,000 to 20,000 penguins at that time. What are you noticing about that sentence? Now that we put a full stop and took away the end. It sounds better. Why does it sound better? Because there's no multiples and in those sentences. And you have, if you have multiple ands and ands and ands and ands and ands and ands, and ands how does it make your reading sound? Sounds weird. Why does it sound weird? Okay, so I'll let you watch the rest of that writing conference. That was one of seven minutes in that writing conference. Now it's time for publishing. What did we do? We gave kids an access to a book creator library and we said, okay, create your books here. And so kids created their covers and this is the book, the little virus book here. It was, was by, by another student. And then he's just taking his narrative that we worked with for several days and we revised with him and we conferenced with him and then he put it here, he published it here with illustrations. And there's a choice for him to read out loud if we wanted him to practice um, in intonation, reading with an int intonation, infection, sorry. Now let's move to, by the way, we, if I wish to do this again, this is what I would have done. I would have paired kids together and made them collaborate more often and made them co-create a story together. One, this reduced uh, the writing, the grading, but also second, this, uh, or feedback. This also allowed kids to feel more collaborative. They were working together and that would have motivated them more. So let's show, that was an example of a uh, very isolated writing instruction. And to help you, to show you the integrated writing instruction, I have something called modeled off of Nancy's Talk We Talk Write. And what we did was I uh, 
had a listening activity, a reading activity, and a writing activity spread out of three days. This would be Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's when the kids came to me in regular, in, in uh, physical life. And so we mirrored that, that in virtual life as well. So let me show you what that looks like. This is the adjective that I gave them on Monday. It's I can describe, I can write to describe how a conservation program in my country that is helping to protect animal plants and the ecosystem. So we gave them that task. Uh, we said that by Friday, you'll be able, by Thursday, you'll be able to answer this. So we gave them first a listening tap. Well, we had to teach them the word level of conserve because that's really key to this project, but also it's a tier two word and it's connected to the content of ecosystem. So I taught them, I gave them a picture of a fan, I gave them a context, I gave them a sentence starter, and then they answered with their own ideas. That was part of the video. I would say, stop now, and now that I taught you what conserve means, I want you to finish the sentence in a comment. And then kids would do that just to give them a, some practice. The listening one was, I gave them an Ed Puzzle, I took a video, I put it into Ed Puzzle, and then I embedded comprehension questions along the way to help kids understand. They would work by themselves to complete this. That was that would give them a context of what conservation is, a conservation program outside of Vietnam. So this wasn't a conservation program in Laos. Now to this writing this the goal of this unit was to help kids learn how to paragraph. And these are the different paragraphs that kids could write about. We I helped them by guiding them prompting them and thinking about these are the topics that they are going to research and also write about. So that was a little visual map for them. So the read, so we just did the listening part. The reading part is the next day, Wednesday, when they came to me for class, they watched a video that instructed them to go and research a conservation program in their country. They can read in their home language. They can read in English. It doesn't matter, but I gave them this blank one. And then they are filled, they're filling it in. Notice Kimmy is actually using the headings from here to help her write and to help her research. And she chose to write in English, even though she's very fluent, more fluent in Vietnamese. So now we did the listening and reading. Now it's time for her to take everything that she learned from her research, from my kids' research. And then they organize it in, in her box writing. So I gave them this template, it was blank. I had a picture here, I said, insert the logo for your conservation program and then add your text here. And so sometimes it, my goal was to see if they were able to break down the paragraphs and using, a, um, and using this to, to guide their writing. So again, I would have done this differently. I would have paired kids up or had kids teamed up from different countries, same countries or different countries, it doesn't matter, but they're gonna work together to do this. It would have been more collaborative and more engaging if they were to doing it. They had someone together to help them through the process. Now I'm going to beginners. I've worked with beginners before in middle school and high school, but not in this, in, in this particular school. So I'm gonna reference a few things from other people and, and also offer what I have done. So for beginning writers, this is from the amazing Katie Topol. This was from her, from her tweet a few years ago, or maybe a year ago. The way she did it, she used something called a sentence chart. She displayed a picture, a content-specific picture. Then she brainstormed the words, the verb, the preposition that kids can use to help them write full sentences. Then she modeled it. And at the end, she would give kids an opportunity to write. You could do this as well. You could have kids come synchronously at the same time and you could model this and you could create a little electronic table that you could put on a Google Doc or a Google Slide for them to keep to help them when they're gonna write. And this is what I did. I just did an example because there was a scarecrow here. So I created a scarecrow using the, taking the sentences together on Katie's chart and I created a buncee. And the, my bun, the, the slide is, says the scarecrow stands in the field to scare away the birds. So I added a background. I got us a little sticker inside of Buncee and I got a little action animated sticker to, to put it all together. So this is really enhancing your writing. You really, you're illustrating your sentence where yes, we are designing our writing. We're beautifying our writing, 
but really we're teaching them to be creative, to be visual, but also to give to enhance the writing experience. Now you could do this in multiple platforms. I, I just showed you Buncee, but you could use Google Slides, Seesaw, Adobe Spark, and Book Creator. So here on slide 30 and 31, the beginning writers, I gave you four examples. And so you can look through them on your own leisure, but I'm gonna just show you um, one from my kid from China who came to seventh grade as a beginner, and yet he was still expected to do the same thing as his other peers, and we just modified it for him. So we gave him the writing opportunity. Instead of writing an essay, we had him create an animated video with text. This is what he did. Please watch. So I hope I hope you saw that example of how he was able to still practice writing, academic writing. He yes, he translated it in Chinese and to put it into English, but yet he was able to demonstrate his understanding of the ecological impact of dance. Let's watch another one from uh Bunsi here. Uh, actually, a read better example would be here. Let me just show you from Julie Kennell. She was a participant in my one of my sca scaffolding courses. What do you call a large pink animal that lives on a farm? A large pink animal that lives on a farm is called a big pig. What do you call a dog that just had a bath? You call a dog that just had a bath a wet pet. What do you call an Oreo cookie? You call an Oreo cookie a black snack. So I just want to pause and show you. Look at the answer bank and how it's very similar to Katie's sentence chart, sentence table. And kids are using this answer bank to help them create their own text. And they put it all together in a, in a book. So this is one way of getting kids to, giving kids an enhanced experience of writing. There are, there's another example from Julie here where she embedded her video talking to kids as well. Um, and then this is one is from Katie Gardner, a fantastic teacher and of language learners and also a tech teacher. And she uses uh, a little gift to show kids what they can write about. It's really engaging. I recommend you watch it. So this ends my part of my presentation, but I just wanna show you that though my audience is that kids have ele ele uh, electronics and they have Wi-Fi, the principle is the same for you as well. It's that we are intentional about asynchronous instruction and then synchronous instruction. We have to be really focused on saying, yes, this particular part, we want you to be together, collaborative, live with us as much as possible. So I wrote the sentence here, sentences here. I said, I shared a process, it's not a product. So don't just take it. Your goal again is to go back and say, huh, this is his audience. How can I apply the principles to my audience? Thank you, and I hope you have a great time for the rest of the webinar.